Welcome back, this is The Clay Golem and this is Foundry VTT. We're back with another video, uh, had quite a few recently. Um, we are looking at another add-on today and the add-on I want to be looking at for a very particular reason is Monk's Active Tile Triggers. And this has been mentioned before, we've not installed it, we've not had a look at it, but it does a number of different things for us. Um, essentially the idea is we can place a tile down um, and then it's activated, so it's triggered. It's kind of the, it's in the name, isn't it? <laughs> it's triggered by a particular activity, so somebody clicking on it, a character moving over it, or something like that, and then it does an action based on that. Um, so this is the this is like the wiki for it. So uh, it just tells you a little bit about what you can do. Uh, and oh, sorry, it was not the wiki; it's the upload page. But there is a whole wiki here that talks you through different things you can do with it. So uh, this is me. Well, from the last video, in case you missed it, I now have Foundry running as the server, but I'm joining the game as the game master. So if you look at the bottom left, we've got the game master, which is what you're seeing right now the server running in the background and i've got Haley logged in on this tab over here uh, it just helped us deal with a couple of little issues we were having um, with a couple of the items so uh, let's look at our modules active modules so this is we are in our fandelva slash stormwreck isle one so we've got loads of bits installed on here um, but we can see we've got monks active tile triggers installed right here so how does this work on the left hand side if we go to tiles we have a number of options here that are standard and one of them is place tile so if i drag a tile just right in the middle here like that it's going to bring me up the menu for this tile um, and that, that's normal except we've got extra things on here because it's monks so one of the things that we can do is we've got this um, tile image or video so we can and video is interesting isn't it so we can actually come in here and choose our various uh different things that we want from here um so we can go into icons um containers all sorts of things that we could pick here uh, environment uh settlement we could pick uh well we could pick blacksmiths let's just pick that okay so we can pick that image tile all right, so let's create that. Uh, and it's created a tile using that image. We can change the size of it, etc. Okay, so it doesn't matter what image we use, whatever we want. Double left click on it again, and we can come back in, and this is where we can change the height of it. We can scale it if we want to one way or the other. So I've made it nice and square now. If I want to rotate it, all those good things that we potentially can do. Uh, because it's a tile, we potentially can make it overhead tile so we haven't used that yet but essentially what that means is it's a tile that sits above the characters so characters can walk underneath it really good for being able to walk under a bridge or under a gate or something like that um, so you can do that and say it's an overhead or it's a roof um, if you want to do that you can uh, we have animation here so if we've uploaded an animation rather than a static one we can adjust the video um, like playback speed, volume, etc. What we're really interested in is the triggers bit. Okay, so we've got three sections on here for triggers. Uh, so we're on the setup. So first of all, is this an active trigger? Yes. Uh, restricted tokens. So which tokens can trigger this? Okay, so only players, only GM, etc. I'm going to set this to only player tokens so I don't accidentally trigger it um, with monsters and things who's it controlled by well again it can be players or gms or anybody i'm going to leave that as anyone because uh, i'm not sure that's going to have an effect and what is the actual trigger we wanting so let's have a look at this drop down so what is going to it's going to trigger when time changes the lighting changes uh, it's a door trigger manually activate it happens when you change scene at the end of combat, the end of turn or start of turn. You can see there's loads of things hovering over it. Um, create token is created. We click on it. We right click on it. We double click on it. We double right click on it. There are lots of different things we can do here. Um, but the one that we want is enter. 
I've turned it off. Enter. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so what that means is when a only player tokens enter this tile, so they step onto this tile effectively, then it's going to trigger. So that's what I'm going to use it for, for solving a very, uh, a very simple problem. Um, but I just want to make something that looks a bit fancy and it's connected with our shops. So allow when the game is paused, irrelevant for this, because if the game is paused, the players won't be able to move their characters anyway. Uh, trigger using an image instead of border. Ah, okay, right. So yeah, if you've got an image inside there, I'm happy to leave that as it is. Uh, hover over pointer. Uh, token must have sight to trigger. I'm going to say no, because in town we might not have sight on because we want them to be able to see everything. Only once per token. I don't want that. But that course means that once it's triggered, you can't trigger it again for an individual. Um, so it could be you step on a pressure plate and it costs bless. But it will only do that one per character, for example. So you could do that. Uh, of course, you could be you tre tread on the pressure plate and you set off the trap. <laughs> that's, that's the obvious one, isn't it? Literally creating pressure, pads, uh, pressure plates for stuff. Okay, so when a player tokens enters the same area as the tile is going to trigger. What are the actions? Now this is currently empty but we can click add here and we get another little box up and this is where we set what the action is. So it will activate or deactivate something, um, activate an effect so you could have they literally walk into here and it sets off a smoke effect or it sets off fireworks so you might have a some kind of trap where they you know, as soon as they move across an area, if they haven't spotted it, it sets off a trap which fires fireworks into the air and you can have that animation play and, of course, it alerts the monsters. So it could add items, add them to combat. I like that one. <laughs> uh, change scene, create a token. Um, oh, look at it. There's loads of things. It moves things. It opens a journal. You step on this, it automatically opens a journal for you. That's nice, isn't it? Um, automatically pauses the game so if the characters are running around and one of them tries to run off down a particular corridor you could have it automatically pause the game to stop um, to stop them running too far down there that's a use you could have um, reset in the fog of war roll tables um, lighting scrolling text showing dialogue images it's just so many things you can do stop sound there's obviously a start sound somewhere um, you know, so it's just great. Teleport them. Yeah, now teleport is one that potentially actually just seeing that if you want to, I suspect that it's going to work where if you want them to change elevation. So they are in one area and as soon as they step onto the stairs, it teleports them to the top of the stairs on your next map or something like that. We'll have a look at that at some point um, because that's probably a really useful thing for us to use. So lots of things we can do. What I want to use this for at the moment is I want to use it for change scene. So change scene. Now I can select a scene. I can go to this, spill all my scenes up here. I can target and I can select one of my scenes that this takes me to. So let's select the Stone Hill Inn. All right. Who is this actually going to work for? Everybody? players only the triggering player is what I want so I'm going to click update on that so when a player token goes over this icon it will change scene to the Stonehill Inn for that trick that player that triggered it okay um, we've also got images on here if we wanted to we could show an image I don't want to so let's update that tile and in theory that tiles working uh, hang on, sorry, didn't want to do that. I wanted to move this out the way. So I'm going to select that tile and I'm going to move it over our inn. Now obviously I haven't got the best picture. I really haven't. Um, but let's leave that on there. Okay. And then let's see how that works. So flip over to Haley, who is in town here wandering about doing various things and she says oh I'm going to go to the inn so you go okay well you off you go to the pub look at that yeah it immediately 
immediately change scene for the player and okay so it dumped her in the inn over there we probably want to dump her in the inn by the door um how cool is that so it just hit that trigger so when i was talking about something like a town setting and i want to give my players a reasonable amount of freedom for wandering around and going to shops they can do that themselves and now Haley's player can oh actually i want to come in here i wanted to come and see toblin um, and do some trading that player can just crack on and get on and do that and the dm can be somewhere else doing something else specific um that's good isn't it now the question is how does Haley now get out of the pub <laughs> uh because um okay in, actually she should be able to move herself back over to fandolin to be fair because uh <laughs> that's the way that um i've got it set up but we can also let's pop her back in there Eey, lovely we could also create a exit trigger down here that will take her back to fandolin so if she wants to leave she just moves her token to the doorway and it will do it let's prove that point so back to our dungeon master user let's come in here okay we can pop uh, we can pop Haley near the door uh, because what it means is next time Haley comes back in her token will automatically be near the door because that's where she last left it so that's quite nice as well we're going to create a new tile um, we're going to create it there uh, we can choose an image now I haven't been through and looked for images properly for this uh, because I just wanted a kind of overplay so uh, we can pick anything let's pick a graveyard <laughs> don't ask shush <laughs> um, so we're going to do that uh, it's not an overhead tile we want to go straight to animation um, we, sorry we want to go straight to triggers we want to set up to say yes it's an active trigger uh, pl only players it's controlled by anyone when they enter it it's going to do it which is great and the action we want them to do again is add activate we want don't want that we want change scene the scene we want it to do is to take back to Vandalin uh, and for the triggering player create that tile now obviously rubbish image um, let's pop back to Haley. so here is Haley as logged in as a player She's finished doing her trade. She can move to the door and here she is back in town. She can move off again and she can wander off to her next location. Her next location happens to be Barton's Provisions. Oh, that's not all the way over there. Uh, now, she hasn't got a token. Yeah, she has got a token on here. I'm pr pretty sure. Yeah, I did give her a token on here, but, but I've made it invisible. Muppetry. Let's go back to Barton's. Uh, activate that from over here yeah there we go she's invisible and so is sorryman so don't create a new one you muppet okay so what we potentially could do is the trigger could do two things this might be getting more complicated than we need but it could be a case of the trigger is when you arrive or when you when yeah when you trigger it to come in it activates this scene and unhides your token so you're in here and now you can interact do your shopping etc and when you go to your exit it hides your token so i wonder if we can do that i mean i might be stretching myself a little bit i just realized i'm in the, yeah uh, i just realized i um i might be stretching my capability a little bit there but you know put an exit down there she will go so let's go and play with that let's see if we can do that um i'm not confident <laughs> can a tile trigger more than one thing i don't know okay so we want to go to our tiles we want to select this tile okay um and we've got a trigger actions change scene to fandolin but we can add another one so what we can do is well, let's have a look uh can we uh i'm looking for show hide the triggering token set the state to hide okay that sounds like that will do what we want now do these have to be in a specific order we want to hide the triggering token here and then change scene 
Okay, so let's see if that works. So again, let's move you off of here. So we know that she is not hidden. If we, sorry, if we do that, she pops outside. Now, as the game master, I don't want that. As the game master, if we look at this token, it's now hidden. And because the game master's moved her token, it's taken us outside, or it's taken me outside. Uh, back to here yeah that's what I want to do that's how I want this to work so when um, so I need to fiddle with Barthens provisions of course but it does mean that when another character so when let's go back to Haley yeah when Haley goes in here pop it pops her over here and will show so let's um, not that <laughs> Getting confused between my things. Let's pop to Barthens Provisions. Activate this scene for me. I am going to hide Haley. So as the player, I cannot see my token in here. Okay. Go back to Bandolin. I'm going to look at this Barthens Provisions tile. Okay. Um, and I want to look at the actions. And we've got change scene. I also want to... Uh, show hide was it show hide was it called a show hide the activating token and I want to show it but what I wanted to do is to show the token in the new scene not this token if that makes sense so it should hopefully change scene then show token at the moment so we move over Haley over here at the moment in that scene sorry I'm jumping between scenes but hopefully you can kind of see why Haley is currently not visible oh why did it just why did it just drag Haley in here right Haley's not in here okay good right <laughs> I did two things at once Let's see what happens, okay? If I not look in the Stonehill Inn, I just want to view this scene. Don't activate it, okay? Just viewing this, Haley is not visible. Haley moves over here. Okay, so it's not making her visible. So I wonder how we will do that. So we can do it exiting because it will activate the because it will do it on the triggering token and hide it and exit. On the way in, it is affecting the token that's out here because the triggering token is here, not in there. Whoops, don't wanna move that one. So uh, I'll have to have a little play with that, see how I can get that to work. Uh, but the concept's really good. I mean, all I need to do is update this picture, really, and, and that's working. Any one of the characters can walk in, and there they are, and away they go. Uh, now, currently, she's hidden, of course, uh, and that might be because the GM did it, but she can exit again, and off she goes and wanders. Now, the question is, is do I want her token to... Let's go back to Haley. Uh, Oh, uh, can I pull Haley to this scene? Thank you very much. Okay, so Haley's here. Um, so it, when Haley does this, as she goes into the shop, she can't see anything because uh, token vision's not on. Uh, it worked a minute ago. Why did that not work? Don't worry about it. That's not what I'm looking for. But it leaves her token showing on here so other people can see that that's the shop she's in. So my question is, is... Do I want to hide that token so actually the other players don't automatically know? I mean, they'll be talking to each other, so is it a big deal? I don't know. I think I'd probably just have it visible so everybody can see who's in the inn if they are out here in the town. Um, yeah, I might do that. Yeah, anyway, good stuff. Let's get, let's go back to the Stonehill Inn and work out why Haley's gone blind. Why have you gone blind, Haley? 
because she was that's interesting she was hidden well she shouldn't have gone blind because i hid her is it because uh, she was outside of the i don't know i don't know i'll have to have a fiddle with that but anyway so the point is that is monks um monks tile um no <laughs> my poor brain we've just been looking at monks active tile triggers that's what it is get it right for those of you who are interested in using it uh, i think that's really good and i'm really liking the idea of our players being able to move around town go into buildings themselves they can come up interact with get out of the fire they can interact with the people in those places when they are shops merchants um, and then they can leave whenever they want to Haley ought to be doing that herself bop pops her outside off she goes and she can go off to the next shop it's like oh yeah i'll meet you at barthens provisions off she goes she's now in barthens provisions i really like that um, the only thing i need to do is figure out how to get her token to show when she enters it and the only reason why that's a problem the only reason that's a problem is um, if I go to that scene is if Soriman's in here or if Soriman's not hidden in here when Haley enters the shop she can see Soriman's token as well and that might get confusing oh is Soriman here as well like no he's not so I want Soriman's token hidden when he leaves but I want to show their tokens when they arrive. So um, I think there's probably quite an easy way to do that. In fact, actually, let's have a quick look at that in case it really is that simple. Let's just chuck in a new um, tile token here. Um, we don't necessarily need an image for it. Okay, we can leave it as a blank one. Um, the trigger, let's look at some of these triggers. Um, player tokens only um, controlled by right when enter so enter the trigger or so it could be that we create token um, the trigger on scene change let's try scene change and it might be that it's going, oh, you've changed scene, and so it triggers it, or it might only work on the exit. So when we change scene, will it... Where was it? It was show hide, and we want it to show the triggering... triggering token let's create that tile uh, and I don't think it matters how big that tile is for that purpose so Haley is currently hidden in here okay so she's hidden uh, let's pull Haley back to Fandolin activate pull everybody here okay so in that scene uh, view scene Haley's hidden Haley wanders into here it triggers it but it hasn't revealed her and she can see this ghost image of the tile which we don't quite want okay I haven't got the solution for that just yet don't want to make this video hugely long um, but we've got a really really good way to get this to work so that they can walk in and walk out it's only about um, we can hide the, them on exit um, we can just make this a, a trigger you know I put a box to one side that says exit and they drag their token onto there and it pops them back out again and hides their token. We've got that working in the Stonehill Inn. What we haven't, what we need to figure out is how do we, when they come into the scene, then it activates that thing to show their token again. Saves having all of the player tokens showing in the inn regardless of where they are. That's a little problem. If you already know the answer to that, drop it in the comments. It will save my brain. That would be really, really useful. Um, but yeah, it's looking good. We're getting really good with some of these uh, automations and things, just making it really nice and slick, independent stuff. We've worked out our shops. We're now getting close to working out that independent movement around town uh, and things like that. Really, really good. 
Um, brilliant. Leave a like. See you in the next one.